yes, we'll be talking about the uh, forthcoming Anambra governorship elections. And uh, so, yes, as you've seen there, we've got two gentlemen joining us uh, this morning. But we'll stand here in Lagos. We've got Chief Dan Olasi, who is a former chairman of uh, PDP in the state, and the NRC. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. Well, quite interesting things playing out in the state. There's several perspectives, really. But, uh, of course, there's security. It's a big component. We've seen all of that deployment going on in the state at the moment. But from what you've seen, talking about the build-up to these elections, are you optimistic? What concerns do you have? you think things will go on, irrespective of all of this surrounding distractions, as it were? Well, thank you for inviting me in the first place. And good morning. Um, it would be difficult to have this analysis and the line you're doing it. I believe the situation in Anambra, and in fact, the rest of the South is, is getting even more complicated. The, 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 it's not just holding election on Saturday. There are a lot of uh, precursors before that election comes up. The, the case of Unam Dekano has further complicated the matter in the sense that the common people in the various villages are asking questions. How do we have a young boy whose crime was to ask for honesty, for understanding, for justice for his people, and in a country where you ask for justice, a gun is placed on your head, and we leave him languishing in prison, and people are talking about election. This is the tendency of people saying there will be no election. And there are parties running around, Nobody appears to be interested in what is happening. And in the past few days, the situation has even been more complicated with the fate of uh, Justice Mary Adelie. So it, it does indicate that there is a, a, a defined process to decimate a people, or like the government says, dominate a people and decide what happens there. So the, the candidature is not just now about whether can, somebody is qualified. If they have a basic certificate and have experience, that's qualification in Nigeria. Whether you have performed in the past, it's not relevant anymore. So we're now looking at Saturday's election from the point of view of candidates who will have courage to be able to discuss the very serious situations in Anambra, which also affects the rest of the Southeast. We have fundamental problems of existence there's an existential problem in the Southeast, and Anambra typifies that. So it's not just people running around who are going for an election. Mm. Trying to discuss that, and they got, get into, supposing Mrs. Odeli had been killed in this raid in a country where a Supreme Court judge is messed up, still from the Southeast, you can see it is a lot more complicated problem than just going to vote. So if you, could, uh, if you could just shed some light on this matter for us, if you will. Um, so what is the thinking? Is it that uh, if they don't let elections or want elections to hold, and then assuming elections don't hold, uh, what is that going to achieve? Because uh, uh, the gentleman you spoke about is undergoing processes in the court. Um, the factor you also raised now about just so they, they've said they're going to investigate it. So all of these things also have processes. Yes. So if the elections don't hold, what will that have achieved? Well, majority of us are conversing that elections must hold. But we are now discussing about what kind of candidate will appear to be governor of Anambra with the courage to want to face the realities on the ground. And that was why I had to give you the initial problem of Nambikan and Odelis now, okay. which are complicated. It's not just uh, people running around, I want to be governor. How many of them have taken the courage to even mention, to defend our sons and daughters. Some arrested, some killed, and nothing is going on. So when I look at the, I narrowed it. Uh, it was another television station that I narrowed the governorship to three main candidates. And then I said uh, it was Toludo, it was uh, Valo Zubo, and then uh, Obioro Konkwa. And her reasons why I had to narrow it. And yesterday I was looking at their debate. It was uh, uh, Andy Oba, Toludo, and Val. They removed the... Uh, you didn't include uh, Senator Andy Oba? 
Yes, they didn't include the Val, I mean, um, Obiolo Konkwa. Well, probably they did it on parties with platform. Maybe parties that have been in government. They must have a reason. Arise, uh, I didn't know what their reason was. I didn't watch it from the beginning, so I didn't yeah, know but, whether but, they gave a reason. What was your reason for leaving out the APC candidate? M myself? Yeah. Because initially I said he wasn't competent to be governor. He had no business wanting to be governor of Anambra State. Absolutely not. Okay. First, he's not qualified. He's not qualified to be governor. Secondly, he organized with his boss then the kidnap of Ngige that failed. And that, was, that kidnap failure dissolved the state executive of PDP. And that was when I was appointed chairman of party. Are you speaking about this from the point of view of perhaps documentation or reports, police reports? No, or what, 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 I, what I'm saying that I, I, I worked as chairman of PDP for three and a half years, I mean three and a half months, and sometimes I, I was on this year's channel and AIT, and I told the government what really happened, told the world what happened. Yeah, but is this backed up by any police documentation or anything? Well, how do you back uh, uh, criminality with documentation that, uh, we will, I mean, you can lay hands on? Yeah, it was clear that Anambra State Government House was attacked. But those burnt. are the agencies responsible for well, investigating criminality. The police were responsible. For investigating criminality. Well, do they be investigating in this country? If wow. government is supervising the, the criminality, how do we investigate it? Well, again, it's all the list house was just attacked. And the Attorney General of the country has not spoken about what is going on there. Well, he has. He has and what has he said? He said he doesn't know about what is going on. Yes, he's spoken. That, doesn't that look uh, very funny to you? That okay, a so department under him mm -hmm. organized the police, the army, they have faces, and the Attorney General is telling us that he doesn't know. Well, uh, at but, the but moment, a sec a second. all this of these agencies have denied complicity. So yes. that's the question we were it shows you how beautiful who is responsible. It shows you how beautiful the country is. Okay, now that we that are means... running the country beautifully. Everybody okay. who should know is denying that they don't know what is happening to a Supreme Court judge. So if she was killed that night, it will be fate. Well, the country is asking the question. People need to yes. know what actually transpired. So, so you know, why, we'll why we have play. to have these uh, fundamentals is that we need a governor who is not just qualified, but who will have the courage to defend what not just Anambra is facing, but what the rest of the South is. Okay, because Chief, we are now we, becoming an endangered species. Okay, because now, I will name a candidate here. I will name. No, well, we can't, you can't, we can't name any candidate. No, yes. I will give reasons why somebody would be better than the other. No, you're supposed to be looking at it broadly speaking. Let's see what's happening in the entire scenario. But uh, having gotten your opening, let's uh, equally get to Abuja and see if uh, our guest, the gentleman there, feels the same way. Mark, where? Studio is Ambassador Jerry Gokwe, who is Nigeria's former ambassador to Austria and also a former member of the House of Representatives. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you so very much. It's my pleasure and uh, good morning, Nigeria. Well, there is a, a keen interest in the elections that will happen in Anambra this coming weekend. And there have been questions, uh, fundamental questions, really, about uh, the conduct of the elections. INEC has raised questions way before now, especially with uh, recent activities in the southeast, uh, which has heightened the state of insecurity in that state. Uh, uh, yes, the uh, first guest did refer to how uh, there have been a, a number of uh, sit-at-home protests. And uh, people in Anambra State, it would seem, have also been... Uh, subjected to that, so to speak. So there are questions as to whether or not they will feel uh, safe enough to be able to come out uh, for the elections that will come up this weekend. What's your reading of the situation? Well, uh, let me start by saying that that is a good question that you, you put. You know, it's only somebody who had not been to the southeast or uh, Anambra recently that will not have uh, such a concern. I will tell you that um, you know, many of us are concerned and we're talking about it. Um, we, uh, I was in Anambra you know, up till yesterday, I came back yesterday. And you will really feel bad you know, for uh, people because you're not allowed to, allowed to go around. You're not allowed to go do your own business because uh, you may be killed, you may be murdered you know, by people, nobody knows who they are. I think that is unfair to my people. Now, um, 
It does not mean that we do not share the ideals or ideas of those who are talking about emancipation of, you know, if you will, uh, the evil man. But, you know, I, um, as a diplomat, you know, things are better discussed on the table, you know, but rather than, you know, by shooting guns and killing innocent people. The last time around, I was particularly moved. There was a, a, a gentleman who, uh, his job was just driving keke, you know. He feeds his family with keke, you know. He maybe makes a thousand naira a day and uses it to buy food for the children and stuff like that. Now, this gentleman, on a seat uh, at home Monday, didn't have anything to eat. So he decided to drive out, and even if it means just one passenger was going to give him and his family something to eat, and that young man was murdered. How would you feel about such a thing? You know, when things like that happen, you begin to wonder, you know, are people really thinking correctly? You kill a human being and you think he's a chicken or a dog or what have you. Even chickens, you know, have their places. Even dogs, you know, people can do many things to protect dogs. Not to talk about human beings. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a situation where someone would have the audacity to hold a proper discussion with these people. And, uh, you know, with what my, my brother, my... Uh, former chairman, you know, uh, in the PDP had said, you know, he uh, uh, categorized, uh, or rather he named those he, you know, thinks, you know, were supposed to be, or rather qualified, or who should be governors of an Anambra state. Now, I think he missed out one person very clearly, and that person is Senator Andy Uba of the APC. Now, I and he, he gave his reasons. Yes, of course, uh, you, you know, he has his reasons. Then I have my own reasons too. One is we're talking about security. We're talking about issue of people's lives being saved. I can tell you that I'm aware and that Andy Uba at the time, Owazurike and co were, you know, uh, on top of the uh, uh, Masob group. Masob group. And Yuba went to jail to discuss with him, to sit down with him and talk with him and negotiate to try to find out how things could be uh, uh, resolved so that, uh, you know, uh, the, what the, whatever they were, you know, doing would be minimized so that people's lives, you know, will uh, return to, you know, what it used to be. So the point I'm making is that Andy has the capacity. You see, sometimes people think that it's only when people are shouting on the streets when people are shouting at the tops of their voices, you know, that uh, you can say, you know, they are strong. There are some silent op operators, you know. Many of us are people who do not come out to begin to show, you know, that we've got this or we can do this. Andy is one of those kinds mm -hmm. of people. You don't think that uh, he, he's got some baggage, uh, which uh, the, the uh, gentleman in Lagos also, you know, pointed to during the... Gigier, who interestingly is in the same party with him right now, um, as Dr. Chris Ngige, you know, there were questions as to what transpired when he was governor of Anambra State. I think, I think that is most unfair to say that Andy uh, orchestrated or championed the kidnap of Ngige. I say this because I was, I was one, a member of the National Assembly when this matter, you know, um, uh, came, came up. I am aware, and not only was I a member of the National Assembly, I was the secretary of the Southeast Caucus of the National Assembly. So I'm talking from point of uh, 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 facts. I'm not talking about, you know, innuendos. Or what is the facts that you have? The facts that I have is that Andy was not involved. One, when this happened, a call was placed to Obasanjo. Obasanjo was out of the country when this happened. Andy Uba was out of the country when this happened. Some of us, when we heard this, we were running around to know why would this happen in Anambra. A call was placed to uh, uh, President Obasanjo. And pres it, this was early in the morning, you know, about 3 a.m., you know, in the country where, where they were. Um, that call, Obasanjo was asleep. It was Andy that picked this call, went and woke Obasanjo up, 
told him about what was happening in Nigeria. Obasanjo instructed him to call the vice president and call the IG to make sure that that didn't happen. How would you say that someone like that orchestrated such, a, such an arrest, I mean, such a, such a kidnap? I think that is the most unfair thing to say. Like I said, you know, this, if, if that was the case, we have security agencies who would have been able to expose this. We have security agencies who would have been able to bring out these details. So it's, it's not enough to accuse somebody of something. But like I said, I was an insider. So as members of the National Assembly, as caucus members of the Southeast, particularly those of us from Anambra State, we ask questions. And while in the process of asking questions, some of us were sent you know, to make sure that the president was contacted. And that was what we did. When that call got to the president, it was Andy who had that telephone, the president's telephone. So Andy went and woke up the president at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Someone well, having done that, it would be unfair to say by anybody that we'll such a person out, we'll did We'll find the out from our guest in Lagos whether he also has this fact, which you have. But I want to quickly take your reading, because you say you just came back from Anambra. If you have done... Uh, if you've spoken to the people who are expected to come out to vote on Saturday, what are their thoughts in terms of what needs to be done to make them feel safe? Well, of course, uh, people would like to vote, to go and cast their votes. You know, um, without a governor in Anambra, you know what the situation is. You know what the constitutional requirement is. It will be either a state of emergency or, some, or somebody else will take over Anambra. And people do not want that to happen. I went around, I spoke to some people, I went to my hometown, which is Nobi. Incidentally, in my hometown, the day I was, the, the day I was there, there was a killing in my hometown, right in the, in the middle of the market square. Two people were killed, in fact, about three. The police and, and these guys were exchanging fires for 45 minutes. So I, I, I feel the pains of my people. I mean, it was like a, a, a desert, you know, people deserted the market. The market, as a matter of fact, a woman who was selling, uh, you know, provisions, you know, you know across the, around, around, along the road was killed. How would you feel? So the people are determined to go and vote. People are determined to go and vote because what it means is that the present administration is not taking it serious. How could you, you know, that the governor of my state, the, the Southeasterners were having a governor's uh, security meeting and you did not attend. You were busy campaigning with your candidate. Where is that done? If I were that candidate, I would not even appear on that rally ground when people are being killed on the streets. When the governor ought to be there at the meeting for issues concerning Anambra State, particularly, which has become a killing zone. To be discussed and you are not there you you went around campaigning that's unfair people are determined to go and vote in anambra now i'm happy that you know like i said i came back from anambra yesterday mm -hmm. and military men soldiers uh policemen have been moved into the state and people say as long as they feel safe you know with the policemen and the soldiers and the rest of them they will go and cast their votes Whoever they vote for is a different kettle of fish. But the important thing is that they are determined. They want to go and cast their votes Let's for somebody they want to govern them. Let's throw this back to Lagos now. Chamberlain. Well, um, thank you, um, well, Chief. One of the issues that comes to mind here, Chief, is, uh, I mean, we elections are already pretty much in play. The greatest concern for so many people right now, beyond the politics, beyond the politicians, is the people. What, in your opinion, do you think needs to be done to ensure the safety and security of the people who will employ the next governor of the state? Let's focus on the people for a few seconds, sir. The what needs to be yes, done that's what you is said. that the people must be spoken no no, no. That, that's for our possible, lagos guests sorry sorry be, ambassador that's for our lagos guests chief Olasi. well you know i listened to my good friend incidentally you can see time changes everything there is uh, there is uh, no secret that time does not reveal i'm shocked beyond belief for my very brilliant uh, 
friend and uh, an architect who was an insider and knew what happened, how it was plotted. And they plotted it and went on tour. But I don't want to dwell on that. That's not why we're here. We're here to discuss the Anambra election and he has now taken it to another stage of uh, mentioning his, who he thinks will win and giving reasons, which looks to me ridiculous. But um, Jerry is somebody I love very much. He's a very bright boy. So it has been useful to him too politically. Um, I think the situation you asked about, the insecurity, only one person at does as things stand now. You know, I gave a, a background. Our background will relate in relation to the problem, what is facing the South East now. It's in Namdi Khan. Nobody should deceive himself about that. The governor said, any good governor is now taking up a serious initiative to see what to be done. So anybody who is going to be governor in Anambra State must be prepared to face it squarely. No, the question here, sir, is what do the people themselves need to do? What it's, does government need to do to ensure the safety and security of people? Well, we know the, that, just a know, second, just a second, sir. Just a second. We, we know that government has, just a second, we know that government has deployed, you know, policemen, yeah. hundreds of uh, yes. commanders, and uh, even the military has done some deployment to the effect. Do you think that is sufficient to ensure the safety, to assure the people that they are safe and secure to go vote? Look, you know, I don't want to go into the details of this imported violence. Let me tell you, because I was kidnapped on the 26th of last month, the people who kidnapped me told me what was going on. They are being hired from outside to create violence in Southeast. Most of the violence taking place in the Southeast are not by, uh, from Igbos. People in certain situations pay people to create uh, you know, mayhem in their land. Unfortunately, because they wanted a situation like that to develop, and that was why the Attorney General of the Federation demanded that an, a state of emergency be declared in Anambra, as if the situation in Anambra was anything near Niger State, where the governor says he's lost control of his state. He's lost about uh, 400 communities. As if the situation in Anambra and South East is anything near what is happening in Castina. As if the situation is anything near in what is happening in Zamfara. And neither the bandits and the herdsmen have been declared terrorists. So tell me, apart from these occasional stops and gyrations, what has IPOD done that was so significant to send the Nigerian armed forces to dominate the Southeast? You cannot, on a comparative analysis, say that what IPOD had done over the years has anything in relationship with what uh, the carnage that is going on in, in Northwest, Northeast, and North Central. So, I'm not in that. But what I'm saying is that. Of the candidates I mentioned, let me get back to the business. The three candidates I mentioned, very qualified. But topmost on the qualification is Professor Toludo. He's not from my party. He has not even told me. But the qualities following him is incredible. You cannot discuss it. He has courage. And I was watching the television interview, I mean, a program they had yesterday, their, their debate. He said he was the only one who went to Kuja prison to see Nam de Kano, and that led to his release. So he has the capacity to engage the federal government, because if you don't discuss the question of Nam de Kano, there will be no peace in the Southeast, whether anybody likes it or not. And the, the, the case of Mrs. Odeli has further complicated the matter now. So we need a, a governor who has courage, who will look at the federal government at the face, and say, why don't we sit down to dialogue? Like... Uh, 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 Jeru Gopo said, we need to sit down to talk. But it doesn't appear this government wants to talk. Uh, we're trying to look at ways to ensure that this election is uh, safe for the people who will come out to vote. It's credible. I mean, on the side of INEC, INEC has been speaking. The security agencies have been speaking as well. But for the politicians, who are the major players in this. Interestingly, even IPOB has said that, well, the insecurity we have seen in, in the state is, is not from ESN, that is from politicians. So it looks like we need to really have a proper sit down with politicians and have a good talk to ensure that this goes well. So uh, Chief Lassi, first, uh, I, I recall that you retired from politics in 2017 and thereabouts. So you said that you were not interested in that anymore. But when you referenced my party earlier, yes, we know who you support, but are you back in the saddle now? So we, we know where you stand first before I put in the next question. Are you back in party politics? Well, 
not necessarily the kind of policies I'm involved now is looking to get out authentic Igbos that will take responsibility for the security of our people. And we want to start it with Anambra. So when you say my party, uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, I used to be party chairman of a party. I have not officially uh, you know, resigned. Okay, so you're... Party. But what I'm saying, I, you know, you talked about security. No, no, so, I, so you're still with the PDP, right? Theoretically, yes. No, you're either with the PDP or not. No, you're no, no, no. no. I, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an elder now, and I, I'm open because all the candidates have come to me. All the candidates have come to me. Okay, let me simplify and this. And, and advise them. If they were restricting me to be a PDP member, they won't come to me. Mm. They so won't are, come are to you me because I have to member? leave. I have to leave above party. And, you know, I laid the foundation here about what the interests of the Igbos are now. Mm. And our interest is security of life and property. Definitely. Is, Chief Philosophy, but just to be clear so our, our viewers understand yes. and get closure on this, are you a card carry member? Of the PDP or not? I was a cat carry member. So you don't, you're not registered with the PDP? No, anymore. no, as of now, I'm not registered with PDP. So it's safe to say you're not a party member? Yes. Okay, so uh, talking about now the, 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 the security angle, in fact, there's a lot of issues, I mean, for Anambra to resolve, but it looks like security is top on the front burner. So let's try to resolve this. And I also recall in 2017, you referenced some warlords, is it from South Africa, who are coming to cause mayhem. That was at that time. You're a politician, and you said that theoretically you're with the PDP, you're an elder statesman or elder party man at this time. But from your reading, from the interactions you've had with politicians. You said that the major candidates have come to you, as it were. What's your reading of this uh, insecurity you have seen? Is it still what you referenced in 2017? Is it different? And what do we need to touch to ensure that this is brought to an end? Well, you know, the responsibility for the protection of life and property is entirely on the federal government of Nigeria. The, the governors are... I don't know what to call them, you know, security handkerchiefs. That's what they are. A few days ago, the National Security Advisor, and I must concede, I'm very humbled with uh, knowledge and good delivery, very brilliant man, came out after a National Security Council meeting and gave Nigerians the details of what happened in that meeting, that they took a decision that this Anambra State should, as the president had earlier said, be dominated with the Nigerian military. And I was asking, a Security Council meeting was held for the purpose of making sure that there is security in Anambra election. Not a single human being from either the Southeast or the former Eastern region was involved in that Security Council. Not a single human being. And they did not even go to the extent of inviting any of the governors especially those that support them, to be able to learn from them, apart from what their own security information give them. Now, recall that the governor of Anambra actually visited No, no, the no. President. The governor of Anambra State went after the killing of uh, Professor Kunyeli's husband. So do you know what was discussed then? Do you know if security or issues like that were not discussed? But I'm talking of what she, he did not attend the National Security Council meeting. Is he a member of the National Security well, Council? Well, you can have an expanded Security Council meeting. It happened under Basanjo. Okay, so uh, the sense is, I mean, you're not exactly sure, I mean, the process, I mean, the governor visited. No, 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 the process. That may have been tabled. There is a of process. Of course, it was tabled. The process, but, excuse me, the process is not hidden. Any government can increase the executive council to get information from stakeholders. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a personal requirement. If a government is serious and you need something from Shem Berlin on uh, media, you need to invite him. You need to invite him, you give him information about it, and you use it to formulate whatever policy you want to do on media. I'm just you, trying to say that. No, what I'm, say what, what I'm sure. trying to say is that if the government was sincere mm -hmm. to discuss what happens in Anambra, somebody from Anambra must at least come there to yeah. give them information. So, Chief, is it, are you saying that all of these things have got to be fulfilled before Saturday's election and confidence is restored to the people to come out and vote? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Are you saying that all of these things you've highlighted do they all have to be done to ensure that people are confident about coming out this Saturday to vote? Well, what I thought they would have done to make it effective, that is by listening to traditional rulers or governors or stakeholders, 
They did not do. At least not to the best of my knowledge, they did not do. They have given instruction on their decision. And their decision is to dominate an umbrella with the military. Whether that domination will aid people coming out to vote, we don't know. Whether people looking at people with armored cars, machine guns, will assist them to vote. Because the thinking now is that they want to repeat what happened in Imo State, where an election was held, somebody came forth, and suddenly became the governor. So if people don't come out to vote, they will sit down and write a result for somebody. Thinking by politicians? Because, no, no, what I'm saying is that what the, that is likely to happen in Anambra State, because I was waiting for my brother to say that, I would have asked him, why is somebody like Dr. Chris Ngige not supporting his candidate? Chris Ngige that formed with, Obas with uh, Buhari, formed APC. Why is he not supporting his candidate? But his okay. candidate, who do well, you mean? Uh, no, I mean the candidate of APC. But he's part of the campaign. Where have you seen him in campaign? No, he's, he's actually part of yeah. a member of the campaign. They, they, they announced his name as member of the campaign. He's never been there. Okay. Well, and he was the first person who said that there was no primary in Anambra State and has not changed it up to today. Okay, well, I think Mark has got so, some... So, I mean, this is a factual. Well. Mark well, I know that Ambassador has been keen to contribute to the discussion. You just heard that other allegation... Um, about, I mean, I mentioned the fact that uh, they're both now in the same party. Of course, there's history between the two of them. Um, you know, how do you want to first of all respond to that before we go back to the fundamental issues of people coming out to vote and what you expect of the conduct of the elections? Thank you so very much. Before I answer that question, uh, with all due respect to my senior brother and former chairman, let me say clearly here that the, fe the person that is most qualified, most prepared, most prepared. It's important to underline this. The most prepared person to be governor of Anambra State come November 6 is Senator Andy Uba. And I have several reasons. One, as a politician, I'm a practical politician. I'm not a politician who sits at the back and talks. I go down to the roots. I participate in it. The reason is this. In, 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 in governance, it's not about I. I wish you watched the debate of yesterday. You will be sorry to see that someone will recommend Saludo with the way he spoke yesterday. I did this. I'm the only person. That's not how to be a governor. To be a governor, you must be inclusive. You say, this is what we can do. This is what we should do as a team. No one person can be governor and be an effective governor. And Yuba is one of the only persons who can assemble a team. And when I say this, I say it with all sense of responsibility. I have been in the system and I understand how the system runs. So without equivocation, out of the candidates that are coming out of Anambra, Senator and Yuba, he has been with Obasanjo for eight years. Finished eight years, he went to the Senate and spent eight years. And when we talk about people like Soludo, let me say it on national TV. When you, no, when you talk about a candidate of the other party. He's not here to defend himself. He so may not be here to it, defend himself, but somebody is here defending him. Now, the point I'm making is that it is important to know that the Soludo you're hearing was made by Senator Anduba was facilitated by Senator Andy Uba. How? Because I was present in the villa when Senator Andy Uba's elder brother, Senator Ogochuku Uba, who was the roommate of the, uh, uh, Soludo, brought him to the villa to introduce him to the president. And when that was done, Andy Uba took up the matter and insisted that Soludo, he started as chief economic advisor to the president. I was in the villa. The president called us and said, look, we have decided to make Soludo the governor of Central Bank. One of the chiefs was sent by Soludo to go and thank the president. You know what the president of Asanjo said? Don't thank me. Go and thank Senator Andiuba. He's the person who made it possible for you. What am I trying to say? This is somebody who is, you know, benevolent enough to allow others. Most people in his position would have looked for their brothers or their sisters to give that appointment. I can name 
On and on and on. Many well, other things. But those who claim has. that uh, Professor Soludo is brother enough, I mean, the fact that they are from the same state, isn't that uh, brotherly enough, so to speak? Uh, but, you know, away from, uh, you know, issues of, of personality right now, uh, did it, do you think that the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Andy Obai is running on the platform of the APC yes. and how in, in terms of how the APC is I mean, perceived in the southeast, especially at the center, yeah. do you think that is going to hamper his chances? Definitely not. If, you know, it's only somebody who is blind that will not see what is happening in Anambra. A state where the deputy governor of the state had defected to APC, a state where two members of the BOT of APCA had defected into PDP, a state where a senator from PDP had defected into APC, a state where 10 members of House of Assembly of APCA had defected into PDP, a state where... So they defected into APC and PDP. Do you want to quickly make your point with that? No, the point I'm making is that this mass exodus from other parties into APC is saying something. Uh, you talked about the PDP as well. No, 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 it's not PDP. They defected from AP, P, uh, uh, APCA into APC, defected from PDP into APC. The defection is into, now APGA, you know, has less member they have in the National Assembly, I'm sorry, in the House of Assembly before, as also in the National Assembly, in the House of Representatives, the only APGA they had there has also defected to APC. Mm. Two members of the PDP have defected into APC. What is this saying to you? It's saying that this is where to go. Well, it, with One. this issue of Namde Kano mm. and IPOB, you know, yes. continue to, you know, continuing to dominate the news, so to speak, yes. um, and all of this tied to how uh, the government of the day, especially at the federal level, is mm. handling the matter. Uh, do you think it hampers in any way the chances of your candidate and your party? Ne definitely not. You know what it does? It enhances... It enhances it. You know why? This, you know, when, um, if you become a governor under APC, for example, that means that when issues are being discussed about APC, you will be sitting on the table, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you are talking about a party like APGA, where the governor was sitting and issues of security were being discussed that will be taken to this security council and he didn't show up. Now, the point I'm making is that when governors of APC are sitting down, with the president who is APC, the governor of Anambra State will be seated also. What so it's the, an advantage. It's not a disadvantage. What are the fundamental and, issues which, you, which, you in, which uh, you know, your party sees as the biggest issue in Anambra, which it intends to solve if it is elected into security. office? Security. Security. There must be security in Anambra State. Anambra is the business hub of the Southeast. Anambra is, is you know, if you, if you start calling states in, in the Southeast, you know, if you start numbering them, Anambra will rank number one or thereabouts. And then if you, once you destroy Anambra, you've destroyed the Southeast. So security is number one. I mean, Andiba had brought out a 10-point program, you know, which he intends to pursue. And number one, the very first one is security. Now, Andy Uba is a silent operator. It's not everybody that is loud. He is a silent operator. And I'm telling you that he intends to make sure, if we, first of all, one of the things that is happening in Anambra State today is that for the past 16 years that Abga had been in, 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 in governance, they have never held a local government election. No local, you know that, you know, when the local government is not operating, you know, people feel disenchanted. Now, Andy Uba has said within the first six months of his administration, he will hold a local government election. So that power will go back to the people. Employment, jobs, creation, and, and the rest of it will go back to the basics, to the localities where they belong. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come to Oka to get a job if your local government is functioning. Those are the things that, you know, if done, the issue of security, you and I know that in uh, rural uh, localities, the chiefs, the, 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 uh, the traditional rulers, and the people in the local area 
can even tell you who is a thief, who is a criminal. Well, there are big questions as to how local government elections are conducted in Nigeria. And, you know, some people will say, well, very rarely do you ever see local government elections conducted and any other party, apart from the party uh, which is at the center in the state, uh, winning any other seat. So I do not know whether anything is going to be different if no, he gets it's, into it's office and, and is different. able to it's, conduct so local government ways. elections. In so but, many ways. In so many ways. Uh, yes. Let me say that. It, but let what me I ask would like you this. To, what I would is want it better not to have a local government election where you have appointed caretaker committees? I'll give you one simple example in Anambra. One of the local governments I know, the, 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 uh, their allocation is about 250 million naira a month. Do you know what they get? Five million naira to pay salaries. Where do the rest go? Mm. These There'll are be, the issues. But so if some people would elected, say, if we already know, you know, if the the party at the center in the mm. state already knows who is going to be local government chairman, there's no need of going through the uh, charade of you know going through some purported elections. But let me ask you, yeah. um, you know, for those who still have doubts mm -hmm. who are still skeptical about yes. the conduct of elections on saturday in anambra mm -hmm. state what will be your word to them to assure them that mm -hmm. all will be well and that they should come out to vote i can assure them that one the federal government of nigeria under the leadership of president muhammad Buhari, has guaranteed that they will do whatever is required to protect lives and properties of people in Anambra state so that they can go out and exercise their franchise. It's, you know, I was discussing with someone yesterday. I said, it's so unfortunate that we are in Nigeria and we're discussing this election on Saturday. You know why I say that? Senator Andy Uba won this election in 2007, clear and square. Hmm. Okay, he was removed, not because there was rigging, not because he didn't win, he was removed because the court said that P2B's term had not ended. Hmm. Only in Nigeria would such a thing happen. People gave him a mandate. He was not INEC that announced the dates. He paid his money, ran around one clear and square, and you just weaved him away from the court. Not only that, this is the mandate of the people. In any other crime, what would have happened would be Andy. Now that Peter B's term had not ended, you keep that mandate. At the end of Peter B's uh, uh, term, you go and exercise the mandate. Mm. Well, so that perhaps, is why. That is why. You, that know, you, know, the, you know why I'm making but that Ambassador point. Waterby, that is why everybody wants Andy Uba to become governor, if no other thing. I think your point has been made, Ambassador. We have to, we've totally run out of time. We have to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Ambassador Jerry Ugokwe is... So I'm just asking people to come out and vote. People, the, 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 the environment will be, will, will be safe. Let them come and vote and vote and you buy and vote APC. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Ambassador Jerry Ugokwe is former Nigerian ambassador to Austria and also a former member of the House of Representatives. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. I sincerely appreciate it. It's back to you now, gentlemen, in Lagos. Well, yes, indeed. Our concluding moments with Chief Daniel Lassi as well. But Chief, would you be going out to vote on Saturday? I will be where the voting will be taking place because I cannot vote. I was kidnapped. My vehicle was taken. My briefcase where my voting card is was taken. Therefore, I have to be there just to make sure my people go out to vote. Do you think your people will be confident to come yeah, out and vote me, on Saturday? Uh, uh, well, let me, before I, I get to that, you know, I want to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you, you said, just answer, then you say something. You said, do I think that my people will do Will come out and vote on Saturday? Yes, they will come out and vote. I'm okay. going home on, on Thursday. I have a program in Abuja tomorrow, and I'll straight fly to Enugu. I'm going home on, I mean, a Friday, a Thursday morning. If you doubt, send the representative to come to Neu, my people will come out to vote. Because this election means so much to us. My brother there claimed, because I didn't know the nature of the discussion anymore. I was just looking at it. It, it, looked, it was getting funny to me. Because I want to say emphatically that any man in Anambra State who joins APC for as long as Nandekano is languishing in jail is a saboteur.
No, no, well, well Chief, we, you know, we can't say that because... Now, I'm telling you because no, no, it Chief, is fundamental, Chief, it no, is Chief, fundamental for the survival of our people well, that, that injustice has to be removed well, and we Chief, look at him as a symbol that of is, defending that injustice. That may be your opinion, yes, but it, it, is, may, it is a uh, democracy. People have a right to join wherever they no, want. No, 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 no. I concede that. that. I concede that right. So, let it reflect but in the your circumstances, response. Uh, Chamberlain, the circumstances the Igbos find themselves it's no more democratic. It is existential. We are now fighting for our own existence. And anybody that supports the institution that makes it impossible for us to survive becomes suspect. But then, you know, the thing about and, all and, of and this And you is... forgot to know that the constitution said before you leave your party to another party, there has to be a division. Yeah, These but, people but, moving, what is the basis but, of their movement? But if we can't get into that subject matter, because no, while, but, but, while you were chairman of PDP, several people moved from other parties to your party. So it happens no, to all no, political no, parties. No, not at all. Not so at politicians all. should just and, leave uh, on this your network, that subject matter. On this matter. your network, if you remember, mm. when Tambuwal, as Speaker of the Federal House, after addressing his colleagues, paused and came back to tell them that because of situations in his state, he was leaving the PDP to APC. And two days after, you invited me, and I said it was criminal that he should not be in that office a day longer. But the processes of the Nigerian law, nobody did anything. Today, he's back to PDP. Mm. So we're in a system well, where laws do not, uh, do not function. And, but because laws don't function, we don't have to trivialize you know, constitutional processes. Well, you know, uh, importantly, because uh, the concern uh, for us here is safety of lives and property. So the people in the state have got to be free to come out and vote. That's what we're trying to find out if the atmosphere is good enough they for will, that to they happen. They will have the courage to come out and, and vote. And no one should pigeonhole anyone. It's a democracy. People have a right to their opinion, and we all need to respect that. We could disagree with it. But we need to respect it because at the end of the day, we still have to have a scenario where people can discuss their ideas intelligently. Ideas have got to contend, then the superior ones have the day. It's the rule of law, not the rule of force. And I think that those are the ideals we should project and protect. If I must comment before I leave, I wasn't, I wasn't challenging anybody's right to move from one point to the other. And I started an argument by laying the foundation that the election happened in Anambra State is not just like any other state, that we had fundamental problem of life and property of our people as concerns with uh, uh, um, uh, Nam Dukano. What is happening in the South is it's not happening in any other place. All right, Chief, we need to move because, I mean, we, if we bring out the fact now that Masob, while you were chairman, some of these things happened and many questions, how could this have happened? So there are different scenarios and it's unending. But at the end of the day, we'll just if hope that, uh, everyone, that, we'll have, that myself did what? Well, the, we'll, we'll just have to, I'm afraid. No, 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 because you just made, being, made a statement. I was chairman of party for three and a half months, mm -hmm. and myself wasn't operating. No. Well, um, so the question a lot of people will ask is, I mean, going back to how the government, I mean, you know, branded Masob, you know, uh, arrested leaders, you know, with this, I mean, a similar scenario. And I mean, they'll ask, what did you say about people joining, you know, the, the, the central party in government then? Did you say there were saboteurs at that time? So a lot of people will look back and wonder, uh, what is different mm -hmm. now? But more importantly is the fact that we're looking ahead at this particular election yeah. and the general call, and I think you have also agreed, is that that election should be free, fair, credible, and safe for people. And I'm glad you'll be there and you'll be uh, you know, supporting your people to go out to vote. And we wish you the very best. Yes, indeed. As we wish every other person out there, just be safe. And then uh, we'll hope that everyone does the right thing. According to the law, I know they will say the right thing is relative. But, uh, Chief, we do thank you for coming on. Chief Daniel Lassie is a former chairman of PDP and NRC in Anambra State.